about perfect timing. Wake up in the morning shining. Gotta stay on my grinding. They try to leave me behind it. But now I'm about to go diamond. 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 Yeah. Congratulations to you, to William Thurston, to Jackie and Jayla, to Tijuana Houston, and to Ellen uh, Smith. Mm -hmm. All of those ladies and gentlemen, they have uh, opened up a whole new way of, of building. And this is our first product, our first tangible product. Um, and, and they took it, uh, ran with it, and had massive success. So yes. congratulations to you. I know, Trey, that uh, you are a, an incredible leader. And you were working with that team. And you were encouraging them. And, uh, and they were just following the lead of uh, Mr. Trey Harris, Diamond Ambassador. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I yeah. appreciate it. All right. So Trey, um, yes, I know that you had kind of a, a different route into uh, network marketing. Give us a little bit of your background and your story of how you got involved in network marketing. And, you know, everybody looks up and says, hey, this is Trey Harris. He's a diamond. Mm -hmm. But I think people want to know, and, and people can really relate to someone when they hear the backstory, because you weren't, you know, you weren't always as successful as you are today, but right. you stayed the course and you made it happen. So give us that story, please. Yeah. You know, I, I like, I like to start off just sharing with people. I come from a family of entrepreneurs, so I didn't have a choice. I got it. Honestly, Mark. Um, I grew up in a family coming from small business. We owned hair salons and eventually day spas and we expanded. So I got, I cut my teeth um, in business, you know, pretty early at a young age. And therefore I learned, you know, the business acumen of an entrepreneur. You know, my father used to always teach me from the time I was, you know, eight years old where I was doing payroll for our businesses. You know, he talked about, um, you know, you got to have this unshakable, unwavering faith, man, when you're running your business. So that's that's my background. But as I became an adult, came out of college and decided to pursue our family businesses, um, I realized that they were very small, self-employed type businesses where it depended on us to actually physically do some work being self-employed, it comes with capped income, a lot of liability, a lot of overhead expense. So I, I felt very restricted. And I knew that I was going to need to expand um, scale in business. And so, so I knew I was going to have to eventually do something different. I was praying, looking for something. I felt trapped being in our, even though, you know, I was able to earn a living, Mark, I just was not free. I felt like I was a prisoner with my own, uh, with, with our own business. You know, I was proud of what we had, but I knew, uh, especially when 9-11 hit um, and then 2000, and we could never recover from the economy during that time. And then 2007, 2008, the banks started to collapse. So therefore, I, I, I you know, I, at that point, lost our entire life savings, you know, over 30 years of our family building, you know, this small empire of small businesses. And all of a sudden, just like that, it's vanished, gone. So it got to a point where I was desperately seeking another source of income uh, while maintaining those businesses. And I never wanted to be involved in network marketing. I just did not like um, the concept, and you know why I didn't like the concept? Because I was ignorant, Mark. I didn't understand that it's a powerful business model. I just heard people call it a scheme, and I never took the time to investigate, but it wasn't until someone that I was uh, actually doing business with, and I respected him in business, and then we had a personal relationship, friendship as well, you know, he made some pretty good money in network marketing. It was new to him. And he came to me and said, hey, listen, I found a way for you to pay your bills in your salon, get your uh, family life savings back and, you know, not have to work all these extra hours, you know, because I was working odds and ends, extra jobs, working late at night, running, a, doing security for nightclubs, 
very dangerous, right? And um, when it sounded very attractive what he was saying, and he never said it was network marketing. So I finally took a look. Once I just took a look, I was captivated by the business model. And it wasn't necessarily the product. Uh, I was captivated by the fact that you could own your own business and then help other people earn income. And by default, you could override uh, uh, the, the sales, et cetera. So what that was, was that's exactly what I was doing. You know, I was in a salon business and we hired employees and every transaction that they would do, every service to a client that they would do, perform, I would earn an override from every service, whether it was a haircut, a color, a manicure, a pedicure, a massage. You know, uh, we were doing facials and everything you can think of in a spa service. You know, we would earn a small percentage of over 25 different employees. So when I saw that I didn't have to have the overhead, that was literally, that's what put us out of business. You know, employees, uh, overhead expenses, which comes, which comes with payroll tax, um, um, uh, repairs, your leases, uh, um, maintenance, anything that can occur to cause your business to have any an uh, uh, ever changing and growing expense, that's usually what puts businesses out of business. And that's what was hurting us. It, we were in the red every single month. And um, so when I said, that's exactly what we're trying to do in our traditional business, except over here in this home-based business, there was literally no overhead attached to it. And I can have as many people in that organization and I could override every transaction. It was a no brainer for me. So Mark, you know, stop me if I'm going too far or if I'm in, you know, just get, but I really get excited about this portion because that's when I finally got involved. And it took a long time for me to finally say, okay, I'll give it a shot, right? Um, a lot of times we feel as if, you know, if we tell someone about our boomerang or about our business opportunity and the first time, the second time, the third time, they don't bite and join with you, we kind of give up and throw our hands on that person. Well, the person who invited me to take a look at the concept, they never gave up on me. They kept coming every two weeks or 30 days introducing me to the concept again, except they would give me more uh, information, more value. And um, I finally sat down, got involved, and then I still didn't do anything with the business immediately. <laughs> you know, I still kind of dragged my feet, told a few people about it. And, um, you know, it, it, took, it took maybe six months for me to do almost anything, Mark, you know? And, but once I finally said, okay, enough's enough. I, I'm just, I'm just at the lowest that I can go. Um, I could not pay any bills on time. Every bill I had was, there was a payment plan attached to it, okay? I knew I had a calendar and on my calendar, I would have red, a red marker and that would indicate the last day I could make a payment before I would have disconnected service. And that was for probably three or four bills every month. So I was doing just enough not to have disconnection for uh, evictions and all that kind of stuff. So um, once I got to that point, I said, okay, let me see what's really going on with this business. And that's when I said, let me take a deeper dive. Uh, you want me to keep going, Mark? Just keep. Okay, so, you know, that's when I got engaged with the leadership. I said, enough's enough, okay? I have something here. Obviously other people are having some level of success. If I could just have a fraction of their success, I would be okay. And mind you, at that point, life started to happen to me. Um, we, we, we decided to close our business, our traditional businesses down and because it was just draining and I knew I was gonna have to do something different. So I started attending live events. I started to 
you know, um, uh, uh, get around the coaches and the mentors. And I just, I started to, I started to show up to every event. And we used to do private business receptions where, you know, people would come to a house, people's homes, and we would show them the business, show them the different services. And what I would do, because I didn't have a team then, Mark, I just wanted to be around the culture. I started to carry the projector and the screens and the laptops for the other leaders. And it wasn't even my team. I just wanted to serve them to show them value so that I could learn and be around them. And they told me I could do that. And so that's what I did so that I could be around the information. And I did that for a couple months and then I actually started to build a team. Um, and uh, probably about a year later is when I hit my first six figure, six, six figure mark, um, found, you know, three strong leaders that two of them are still with me today. Um, you know, that was 14 years ago. And we just put our heads together, Mark, and, and started growing from there consistently. So wow. I could go on and on and on. And, you know, that's, that's the first time I've heard that story, Trey. And, really? uh, yeah, I, I didn't realize that, that you were in, uh, in that, di those, the, in that situation, in that, uh, in that no win place where you were just like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Yeah. And uh, how many months was it? So you, you got started. How many months was it until you started seeing success? Well, or how many? My, my level of success was, you know, listen, let me get the return on investment back and then make my monthly overhead a wash. You know, I wanted to neutralize that. And so that, that came up to about uh, 800 bucks. Okay. So, First six months, hardly anything, maybe signed up one or two people. I wasn't selling the product at all. Um, I just wasn't, I, I came because I wanted to, I wanted residual income. So I would say about eight months, Mark, before I really earned my $800 back and was able to uh, neutralize, make my overhead expense go away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when was it you hit your first leadership level? Uh, you know, whatever level that was, but just a leadership level in the company you were in. So from that point, um, that eight month mark, I, I, I took off because I got the confidence and the conviction within me to make no more excuses. So from that point, um, about six months later, I went from just getting $800 a month to hitting that $100,000 mark. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. so over a year, a year and yeah. two months, it sounds like, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I think there are some people that are maybe brand new to network marketing on this call right now and, and they're watching yeah. and uh, yeah. you know, they're, they're probably experiencing some of the same doubts and some of the same things that you experienced in the beginning. And, uh, you know, they need to hear these stories. And mm -hmm. that's why we're doing this series. And, and you know, Trey, um, I respect you. I respect what you've done. Uh, you're a, you, you know, and you're a nice guy. You're just, <laughs> you're a nice guy. To you know, I've been trying to tell my wife that for 25 years. You know, we just celebrated <laughs> 25. Thank you for, for sharing that. I'll let her see the recording. You tell her that I said, Trey Harris is a nice guy. All right. <laughs> but, but you know, there's something that stood out to me in your story that made a lot of sense. And that was, you were a business owner and, 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 and it was your business and your family's business. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people think, you know what, when you're a business owner, you've made it. And the fact is, is in, in, in a lot of cases, that's, that's not how it works. You haven't made it. And so, one of the things that I really, that attracted me to network marketing, same as you, is leverage, leverage. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's things you can leverage in your life. And one of them is time and one of them, and, and the other one is money. And you have been leveraging time. So, and I think, who was it? Uh, Rockefeller said it best. I'd rather have 1% of 100 people's efforts than 100% of my own. And, and 
Mr. Harris, you are an, an, an epitome of, of building that leverage and creating that leverage uh, through your team. And, and you're helping others. And, and see, that's it. That's the point I, I really want to stress here. Mr. Harris has, has created uh, a, a really good income for himself. Yeah, it's, it's, it's exceptional. But